All right, so yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about the basics of ROS for self-driving cars. Uh, this is really beginner because it's a 10-minute talk. So uh, first, if you're not familiar with ROS, it's the robot operating system, and it's not an operating system at all. It's more of a framework and a middleware for robotics applications. Uh, it's open source, which is great because you can add things to it. You can see how people are implementing things, and you can make your changes. Um, but it gives you a whole suite of you know, tools to use to get you started quickly. So without ROS, you're writing a whole bunch of drivers. You're writing the communications framework. And all the algorithms that you want to do for self-driving cars, you're writing them yourself. So that's a little, that takes a little while to just, you know, if you're trying to get a prototype going, and just proof of concept. With ROS, you get a lot of things for free. The logging, error handling, communications framework. Uh, most importantly, drivers for those, you know, different hardware devices that you're using. There are algorithms for, you know, path planning, perception, motion planning. Um, but they may not be you know, the most state of the art, but at least they get you started and you can see how somebody else has implemented this. And to me, the most important thing is some of those tools for visualization. Arviz um, is one of those where you can kind of see and visualize what this system is actually doing. So for simulation and analysis, it's really important. So how do self-driving cars work? Well, you know, without going into too much detail, it's basically like every robotic system. You have perception, so your sensors, um, you combine that with the decision making, and then, at the end, you're moving the car, so you have the actuation. At a very high, high level, that's how self-driving cars work. So ROS nodes take those very high-level tasks and break them into lower-level ones. And so you have a, an idea called ROS nodes. And so you have these different ROS nodes that run on different Unix threads. And for your perception, you can have one for your camera. You can have one for your LiDAR, wheel encoder, all the different sensors. The decision-making, you can have one for each of the different algorithms that you're running. And then for the actuation, you know, with a self-driving car, brakes, steering, and you know, throttle are probably the minimum that you want to have working on your self-driving car. So how do you go between these? That's something called ROS topics. So ROS topics allow you to basically communicate between ROS nodes. The topics allow you to pub you can either publish or subscribe to a topic. So it's kind of a pub-sub architecture. So here you can see you've got you know, your camera over the uh, camera images topic you would you know, publish data. And then your image recognition uh, node can, require, uh, can subscribe to that topic, and you'll get that information, and you can, you know, uh, I guess you can do your algorithms on it and do whatever you need. Now, you could also tie in from another node that needs that camera imagery as well. And you know, it's just pushing the data out, and anybody that wants to listen in can listen in. And then you have the ROS messages. So all the different types of messages that you're predefined in ROS, there's over 200 ones, and you can create your own so that you don't have to do everything from scratch. Uh, you can imagine just point cloud data when you're using a LiDAR. Having to do that all on your own can take a little bit of time to make that message format. ROS gives you ways to do that. So here's an example of like a self-driving car, you know, ROS node, kind of a real simple uh, setup for your network. So you'd have you know, your high level, like we talked about, the perception, your planning, your control. You have ROS nodes that run in each of those. And then all of those would connect to your car or your simulator. On the uh, left-hand side, you can kind of see the Udacity simulator that we use. That's actually the simulator that's used in our self-driving car project that students run. So they actually go through. They program, we actually let them program a real self-driving car. So they pr do everything in simulation. And then they can actually deploy their code on a self-driving car remotely. And we have a parking lot and uh, a driver who will you know, deploy that code and give them feedback and video of how their uh, system performed. So it's kind of cool at Udacity. You can actually take it from just learning about it to actually putting it and deploying it on a self-driving car. But what are some of the limitations? Well, if, I don't know if anybody in here is familiar with ISO 26262, but functional safety is the biggest thing. Functional safety. I mean, you know, it allows redundancy. So it's great for, Rust is great for prototyping. But if you need that system to be fault tolerant and production ready and high quality, um, Rust is still not quite there. There's a lot of initiatives in Rust that are moving towards that, but there's a lot of work that's going on on the side to make custom software packages. You can kind of see this whole WV looking thing. It's kind of a, a verification and validation V for uh, the ISO 26262. If you've ever done systems engineering, if you've ever been on the like, production side of things, it's a lot more complicated. It's a lot, a lot of things you have to do to just verify your system's going to work. Um, and that's why Google and other companies uh, run their systems in, iterate, in simulation for 
millions of miles and also on the road a lot of times just to verify that these things work actually like they expect them to. So a little bit more about the self-driving car program at Udacity. If you've never really dealt with self-driving cars and you're interested in getting started, the program's great. Uh, we'll talk about you know, it a little bit. I was actually a student of it before I joined Udacity. And in the next talk, we'll talk a little bit about one of the chances that you know, Yendrick and I had as being a part of that program. But you learn everything about controls, uh, deep learning, computer vision, motion planning, and a little bit of the ROS. Now, if you want to know more about ROS, we also have the robotics program at Udacity that actually focuses more on ROS, though it's not all applied to self-driving cars. And that's it. Thank you very much.